and good day once again. I hope you're having fun so far. I hope you're learning something. Today we are actually going to get rid of the ugly theme and change the font. Now remember a few videos back when I told you that you can't just right click on the toolbar and disable it with a nice menu and you have to do it all via code and so on? I kind of lied. But I lied for a reason. Um, Emacs has a built-in customization sort of menu. It is built in and you can invoke it using MX Customize. Hit enter and you can search for things you can change here. You can click on so-called groups and then customize them. I really, really don't like using this menu. I use it for only one thing and one thing only. Or well, for two things. For setting the theme and changing the font because I believe that it is a lot easier. Um, the first thing we are going to do is change the font. You can cl I can click on faces here. Faces are, it's basically a font plus a size plus colors. This is what a face is. And what we are looking at is basic faces and the default basic face. You will have these um, settings here that you can play around with as much as you like. The one thing that annoys me about this, and I'm not sure, you know, there's probably an extension that does this better, but I need to know exactly what the font is called that I um, actually want to use. Now I know that mine is called XOS4 Terminus because I've been using it for so long. And chances are you don't. And I'm not really sure how to combat this. You need to know what font you want from the get-go. Um, I'm also going to disable the foreground and background colors because these are actually higher priority than your theme. So even if you install a theme, these are going to still, you know, uh, work. So it will overwrite your theme settings and it's going to make things look ugly. Now the height. It's... Um, it's the size of the font. I want 120. And as you can see, we are editing this. Nothing is happening. And up top it says, Edit at shown value does not take effect until you set or save it. So, I mean, I'm already using the mouse, so why not? I'm going to click on state, save for feature sessions. And there it is. I am actually going to make the font larger, so I don't have to change it every single time I launch Emacs. And you can actually read this now. That's good. Let's play around with the size a bit more. Uh, yeah, no, actually, actually, it's not going to work anyways on this system. That's good enough, though. Now, if you scroll up top, you can click on Apply and Save. It's going to even give you a nice GUI window that's asking you to save these settings. And you'll click on Yes. Um, if you notice, right at the bottom of the mini buffer, it said road to init el. Let's, let's take a look at our init el now, shall we? Let's close all of those. Let's go to our init el. It wrote a lot of text down bottom here. Custom set faces at the default face. And it wrote, you know, all of what we specified back there. It is written here, which is great. It's nice that this happens automatically. As for themes, Themes are installed much like any other package. So let's get out of here. Let's list packages once again. And let's look for themes. Now if you <coughs> I'm sorry, if you do control S theme uh, and then just control S your way through this, you will see there's a lot of themes. A lot of them. Sadly, there is no real preview mechanism. Um, there is no actual preview. Some of them have like links to screenshots. Um, I am not a big fan of this. I wish there was previews, but let's let's open up our browser for a sec, because at this point you are obviously free to use whatever theme you like. But how can you know what theme you actually like? There is websites like EmacsThemes.com that have you know a lot of themes. And they have their names up top, so, you know, this is the hipster theme, maybe you like that. Maybe you just want a green screen theme where everything is green, for whatever reason, I don't know. Maybe you want to use the goose theme, which is very popular. I, actually, I know people who use a goose theme and they write prose. They don't really need, um, you know, syntax highlighting. Exotica is also nice, I use this, but whatever. You can, you know, just pick out one and stick with it. Or don't stick with it, you can change them as many times as you like. 
But here is the deal. I actually know what theme I want to use. There is something called Space Max. Let me show you Space Max. Space Max is a distribution of GNU Emacs. Well, it's actually a set of configurations for Emacs that is kind of meant at Vim users that want to use a good editor. And the issue is, I'm not a big fan of Space Max. I think it's bloated and, you know, configuring your Emacs yourself kind of makes it more personal and you actually have the, all the features that you need and use. They do, however, have a fantastic theme and a fantastic mode line. The mode line is, I don't think I've mentioned this, it's the part here at the bottom for our um, Emacs. It's ugly. This one's less ugly. We'll get to customizing the mode line eventually as well, because it is one of the most important parts of using Emacs. I want this theme. Luckily, this theme is actually provided um, in Melba. So let's look for it. Let's look for Space Max. Space Max theme. There it is. Color theme with a dark and light versions. Um, this one time, I'm actually going to install the Space Max theme the way you know you normally would install software or you install packages for Emacs. Click on it. Let's click on install. Um, install package. Yes, please. I'm going to wait, and it's installed. You probably realize that it's not enabled because our image is still ugly. Let's close all of those. And we can um, invoke a function called, what is it called actually? Customize themes? Or custom, no, oops. Customize, Jesus, can I learn how to type today? Uh, customize themes. Click enter, and we have this nice menu that we can select things from. The space or the theme I want is called Space Max Dark. So if we click on it, it's going to warn you that you know themes run uh, run Lisp code. And you know I trust this theme. I actually checked out the code. I've done some uh, minor modifications locally, but I didn't like it as much as I like the default one. Treat this theme as safe in future sessions. Yes, please, and we are home. I like this theme a lot, but again, we have some built-in, let's show them quickly, Wombat, it's like very um, brownish, grayish, whatever, whiteboard, uh, nah, wheatgrass, nah, some people like Tango Dark, actually it's not bad at all, what was the other one, people use this one, but who uses bright themes in current year, am I right, Deeper Blue is also nice, but I really, really like Space Max Dark, save theme settings, and you can probably guess that it already wrote our init file, so let's close this. Let's visit our init file, and let's see what happens. And right here are the custom set variables, and the um, custom enabled themes was set to space makes darks. Um, it is called a safe theme now, so it won't ask you every time. And it's persistent. This change is going to stay. Um, we have set up our entire configuration in a way that we can just pop it onto another computer and everything will just work. What we have done now is the absolute actual opposite because uh, Space Max theme is not going to be installed automatically. Let's fix that. We can do it in the very same uh, way that we use use package or we, that we installed use package. We can quite literally copy this code and paste it and change use package to Space Max theme, just like this. Um, Space Max theme. That's, that's what the package is called, right? Or is it Space Max themes? No, it's, I think it's Space Max theme. Go to the end, evaluate it, evaluates to nil, mostly because Space Max theme is installed. But now, let's save this because we have now set it up. As already mentioned, you can pop this um, configuration file on any computer launch Emacs, it's going to simply download and set everything up for you. That's how great it is. Now, above and beyond this, a few things that we can also customize are actually, no, this is a bit out of scope now, but everything you see here at the custom set variables that, you know, Emacs kind of sets for you, you can do this all by hand. All of it. Um, which we might eventually migrate to, but for now, you know, using this GUI version, it's it's a lot easier, it's snappier, it's more modern, you just click on stuff and, and you know, stuff happens. I kind of like that. So, from now, you actually have 
an editor that you can pretty much use. It doesn't look ugly. It has some basic functionality. It has this witch key mode so you can learn. And from the next video on we are actually going to be installing... Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to just show you a few minor packages, much like witch key, that are not really obtrusive, but can be very powerful. And especially if they all work together, you know, you don't really notice them, but you notice when they're gone. And then, and so on and so forth, we are actually going to be talking about org mode, which is, you know, I should do a series on org mode. That's how powerful org mode is. Um, and that's about it. Um, another thing that I wanted to note is, we are using Melpa as our repository. There is also another repository called Melpa Stable, which some people might prefer, and I use personally because Melpa is the bleeding edge you know latest git commits just go and you can download them and use them Melpa stable uses actual versions um, but as I said you know it's personal preference you can change it to Melpa stable you know, just you know Google for Mel or just go to melpa.org ch change the URL change the name you know do whatever you want to do it's your editor who am I to tell you how to live your life right and we will also do some more customization very soon because for now um, we have set up everything nicely but there's one actually there's one more thing that I want to get rid of every time we start Emacs let's call it Emacs every time we start Emacs you're going to get this screen here I really don't want to you know have this Emacs tutorial button every time I open Emacs I don't need it I've done the tutorial Let's get rid of it. There's actually a variable that you have to set to a negative value, or actually nil. Um, oh no, actually you have to set it to true to get rid of this. We can You can do it anywhere here in this file. So all we have to do is set q. Set q is the keyword used to set um, a variable to, um, to anything, really, to any value. But it has to be an existing variable. This variable is called inhibit. Uh, startup message as far as I know We can set it to T. T stands for true. So now let's save this. Let's close Emacs once again Let's reopen Emacs see what happens and We are automatically put in the scratch buffer, which is great. This is where we want to be um, You can change what buffer you will be put into and there is something that's called dashboard that I'm going to show you in a few videos That will be the default screen, but for now the scratch buffer is fine. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful and informative. I'll see you in the next video where we are actually going to get our feet wet with a lot of packages. So, until next time, thank you for watching once again, and goodbye.